the cloud and I'm going to start doing the live custom stream and we're broadcasting and we're live. I'm going to mute uh, your mic and all. Cut off your videos because we're getting ready to go live. We are live right now. We're broadcast if anybody's watching us. Come on. This thing's not working right today for some reason. <laughs> to be complicated huh it's jumping around on me the jackrabbit i don't know why i zoomed in and fixed that anyway let me get myself a spotlight here there we go and i'm going to start in just a few moments here i'm getting ready to go live you may hear the birds out there singing outside they're kind of loud <laughs> and get a drink of water here Welcome to the Messages of Inspiration, Hope, and Support, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Jim Grant, your host. We are so glad that you're here. We got our 41st episode today. We got a couple of gentlemen here. We may have a lady join us. We're not sure yet. She's having a little trouble getting in. But I wanted to share some things with you because Speakers Pathway Coalition, we sponsor these messages of inspiration, hope, and support. Got a lot of free gifts for you. I want to show you a few things, okay? Let me share my screen with you and take you over there to Speakers Pathway Coalition. And this is our homepage here at speakerspathway.com. And if you see up here in the corner of a right, right top there, you'll see uh, TEDx Talks. I'll get into that in a moment. Complimentary gifts, we'll open that for you. What others say about us, you can click on there. But this is the messages of inspiration, hope, and support. All of our individual speakers are there. And when you click on that and see more, I'll show you what that, what that brings up in just a moment. But first of all, TEDx talks are very big. Don has a free action guide here. And when we say free, we mean free, no strings attached. Five simple steps to a kick butt TED talk. Complimentary gifts by all of our executive training directors. There they are, Mr. Koji Samaldi, he's an expert on video. Bill Heinrich, he's an expert on clarity of the mind. He has a free book that you can get called Clarity Has No Story at myfreebook.me. M is in Mike, E is in Echo. And going on down the list, Dr. Sony Jackson, content checklist, converting your strangers into clients. Tamara Hunter, celebration journal for cancer survivors and any other life-threatening disease. And Dustin Matthews, how to get out of debt, boost your active income and start investing in passive income. And finally, Mr. Preston Martelli, Mr. Google. If you got questions about Google, that's the guy you need to go to. He will give you a free brand audit. He will also give you his 90 action steps just to get to the next level. So all these gifts here, they're 100% free. Now, messages of inspiration, hope, and support. Okay, when you go there and you click on the see more, you will bring up a bunch of the speakers that we have here. As you can see, we got over 10 pages of all these speakers here, and we're adding more. But when you click on the individual presentation, like Fernanda and her husband, uh, they were on the show. Um, you will get their individual presentation right there. It's on a YouTube video. They talked about removing the toxins out of your house, the things that can make you sick. Great information there. Also, you, you can read up a little bit about them, a little bit of a write-up on them. So that's what we do here. That's the purpose of the messages of inspiration, hope, and support. And let me bring to the stage Mr. Rick Parsons. Let me cut on his video there and unmute his mic. And Rich, how are you doing today, sir? Can you hear me? I can. I'm doing very well. Thanks, Jim. Oh, okay. Can you, did you get the request to cut your video on? I sure did. Okay. Please activate it, sir. There we are. And let's see here. Today, you're going to be talking to us. Positive transformations can arise from crisis. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. Looking forward to it. Oh, you bet. Let me do a couple things here and give you the center stage. And let me get started here first and give you the spotlight. There we go. Come on, spotlight. There we are. It's a little slow today. Sorry. It must be me. <laughs> but let me shut off my video and mute my mic because the stage is yours. 
All right, great. Well, thanks again, Jim. I really appreciate the opportunity to to join your audience and to add value and bring a message that I think is going to uh, resonate with a lot of people. Um, so, you know, during these times of, of crisis that we're going through right now, uh, you know, there's so much stuff going on about it. But, you know, I tell you, I, I'm not really going to focus as much on what we're currently dealing with with the coronavirus. But what I am going to focus on is just crisis in general and how crisis is really just creates opportunities for us. It creates opportunities for change. It creates opportunities for transformation. Now, I imagine many people have looked at, at what's going on around them and as we're either staying at home or safer at home, whichever uh, your state has implemented. And as we're starting to get out into uh, the public a bit more, there's things that we are, are more aware of. You know, we became aware of just some of the challenges that we face being at home all the time, uh, whether it's uh, schooling our kids at home or just being you know, teleworking. My wife and I are both teleworking at the house, so we have to find different places that we're going to do uh, do our work and to not uh, interfere with each other and, and uh, create any challenges there. But, you know, there, there are certain things that you come to value. And in this, I know I have valued more time. Uh, so out of this crisis, one of the changes I've made and one of the transformations I've had to make is uh, embracing the fact that I have more time to do things that really are important to me as a person. And just as I'm sure many of you have found things that are important to you, whether it's, uh, you know, John Maxwell talks about him having a stack of books that he's been wanting to read for a while. Well, now that he's not traveling about, he has more time to read those. And I've been in the same boat. I've read probably six books in the past uh, four weeks. And it's just, it's a good opportunity. So this crisis has brought about a change, an opportunity for change and transformation. So I'd like to tell you a little bit about a, a transformation in my life that uh, created some changes and it benefited in the long run. And I think had that transformational moment not happened, I don't know that I would have the life that I have today. So I grew up in North Carolina. I was a normal kid. I ran around. I played with snakes. I threw frogs and all the fun stuff that, that people do as, as kids. I got lost in the woods with some friends. Now, I tell you, that was a, a transformational moment, to say the least, when you have state troopers and the search party looking for you and find you in the middle of nowhere lost. But, you know, as I grew up, I, I have fond memories of going to my uncle's farm in Roxboro, North Carolina, and going through his baseball memorabilia. And I remember hitting, uh, using rocks as baseballs with one of his autographed bats and launching them off into the pond or into the field, not realizing what I had in my hand at the time. Now, as I continued to grow, my, my memories of childhood and growing up as uh, my father as a pastor, I, I was taught uh, right from wrong. I, I knew that God had a purpose for me and that I was created for a purpose. And so I, I grew up with strong moral Christian values. And as I grew into my teenage years, those values became challenged. And I didn't realize how challenged they were until I joined U.S. Air Force in 1991. It was at that point that my, my opportunity for change became apparent to me. So I was joining the service and I got to my first duty assignment just outside of Washington, DC, and I was in a cultural melting pot. And it was in that environment that I realized that I had a problem. What I realized was that I was a racist. Now I grew up knowing to accept everybody. But what I didn't realize was that my environment, the people I hung around with, whether it was uh, just blatant racism, 
or what, just my environment. I allowed that to impact and affect me. Now, I, I was not, you know, just a uh, gone crazy kind of uh, person, but what I found is that my racism was a little more covert. It was a little more hidden because what it was doing is it was affecting my viewpoint on things. It was affecting my view of others. And it was during that time that I realized that something needed to change. And you may ask, what, what did change? Well, I'd like to tell you something that brought about this opportunity for me. So I was in a conversation in my work center and we were joking around about uh, crashing a barbecue over at my supervisor's house. And one of the guys that I was talking with, he said, well, I, I don't think that's going to be a great idea. And the reason that was is because what I didn't know is that apparently he wasn't all that fond of white dudes. So uh, at that point, I realized what it was like to be discriminated against. I realized what it was like to be unaccepted. And that impacted me. That was something that at that point I realized the, the pain that others must have felt when I didn't accept them. So whether it was not uh, associating with people or limiting my conversations or whatever it was, whatever narrow-minded views that I had were impacting my life. And it was imp excuse me, impacting my relationships. It was impacting who I would be friends with. And I tell you that had I not made a ch conscious decision to change, I don't feel as though my 27-year career in the United States Air Force would have been anywhere near as successful as it was. So I wasn't all that great. I wasn't amazing as a young airman. But I tell you, one thing that I had to do from that point is to realize through the help of friends and coaches and my relationship with God was that I needed to be more accepting. So my awareness created an opportunity for me to take action. So the actions that I took are that I began to uh, consciously be aware of what was going on in my life and in my feelings and in my mindset. And then I, I started to make changes. And the change that I made is one of acceptance because it would not have been enough for me to just tolerate other people because tolerating means that there's still some level of intolerance. And it was that intolerance that created the discrimination, the racism, the prejudice, all the things that got me in this place in the first place. So that needed to change. So I began to accept people and, and, and as I, and it didn't happen overnight, but as I began to be more aware of this, I was able to change my mindset. It was like a, a major paradigm shift in my life and how I viewed people. And so from that, I began to accept people for who they were, realizing that what they had to offer was much more than what my narrow mindedness was allowing me to see. So I had to take that opportunity to change my viewpoints. My mindset had to change. And out of that, what I decided was that my transformational moment was that I was no longer going to allow my mind, my narrow-minded thinking, my messed up viewpoint of others to affect and to rob my relationships any longer. I had to make that change because during that change, I was able to then create a better outcome for myself. So my crisis was that I joined, it wasn't that I joined the Air Force, that was a catalyst, but my crisis was that I realized I needed to change. I had a problem. I was a racist and that was not okay. It wasn't okay with me. It's not okay in society. So I had to put that aside so I could be a better person. Because at the end of the day, I truly believe that God has a purpose for my life. 
And so that purpose was that I was able to change and to grow, and then I was able to impact people. So as a coach in the Air Force, I was able to connect with people of all races, of all genders, of all mindsets, of all worldviews, everything. But had I not changed, I would have limited the people that I was interacting with. So I think that it's important that when we take advantage of these opportunities, that we have to have an end in mind. And so I was able to see what was going on. And by affecting other people, I realized that I had the ability to connect with people. So in my coaching business, one of the things I do is I connect with people. I use opportunities to hear and to listen to them to find their stories, to find out what's going on in their life. Do they have crisis? Do they have transformations? And in that, I'm able to do a multitude of things. I'm able to coach them personally on creating a new mindset or uh, overcoming some challenges to increase their level of awareness. Because when we increase our awareness and we listen to ourselves, we're able to then realize what we need to act on. And then I enjoy, and one of the things that's helped me is I've gone through this And as I'm telling this story right now, I realize that we all have a story to tell. And it's our stories that help us transform. And it's our transformation that is our story. And that we can share that with other people. So I firmly believe that everybody has a story. So when I work with uh, some of my clients that are going to be uh, trying to find their story or what I can help them in a speaking vein. But ultimately, it's that story that defines their life. And you go through a life story timeline that I offer, and and I'm going to offer that to uh, folks that connect with me after this, is that life story timeline allows you to see those key points in your life that maybe were transformational moments or opportunities to transform. Maybe there wasn't a transformation. Maybe a crisis was there that you did not transform out of, and it's still affecting you today. It's still affecting your mindset. It's affecting your actions. Well, I like to use that that story, your life story, to navigate where I can help you. So I would encourage you today to look at your life connect with me so I can give you that life story timeline, but look at your life and figure out, is there something that was a crisis for you that you did not transform the way you wanted to? I think that it's important for us to all do that uh, introspection, to look at our life, to ask the tough questions, and to make the changes that are necessary to create positive outcomes. You know, if you look back in biblical times, Noah, he had, uh, he had a task ahead of him. He had to build an ark because the crisis was that the world was going to be annihilated by a flood. And out of that, people needed to change. Some things needed to happen. Had he not built the ark, who knows where we'd be today. So those crises opportunities that are out there don't run from them use them as a catalyst for change use them to transform your life in some way because when you do that you're going to be better for it you're going to be able to impact other people and i tell you there are people with your story with your life there are others that are waiting to hear it there are others that are going to be impacted by the change and the crisis that you make So whether you're trying to make yourself a better person or you're trying to get out onto a stage and share your story with others to help them transform, do it. Now, my challenge, my crisis was that I had to overcome racism to have a life that God intended for me. And I feel that I'm in this place right now, right here, because of the transformation I made. I wouldn't be telling you this story. So what transformation do you need to make? What life crisis 
you need to overcome for a positive change. I look forward to connecting with you and God bless you. Thank you for being here today. And I hope this message has inspired you. Well, thank you so much, Rich. Uh, that, that was a very inspiring story and it takes a lot of courage to be honest, doesn't it? It does. You know, to admit, you know, this is, this is a problem that I had because we all have problems. We all have baggage and everybody's got hangups <laughs> as we say, but you know, one of the things that you served in the military, the air force for 27 years, is that right? Correct. Yeah. I served a total of 31 years in the army. So I'm I, one, one thing I, I think you'll agree with me on this. The military has done a wonderful job and being able to make everyone look at the individual person on the inside, because yep. that's what we're all about. Cause that's the real us, this thing called flesh. I mean, it's going to brought away one day, you know, you hate to think yep. about your body rotting away, but that's the way it's going to happen. But the real us, we live forever. And to be able to, to treat someone like you want to be treated, that's the key. That's what was drilled in my mind when I grew up. You know, mom and dad would always tell me, mother always said, if you can't say something nice about somebody, don't say anything at all. Right. Real good advice. But I was always brought up to, you know, respect people and all that. And um, very, very thankful. And, uh, but like I say, everyone, you know, sometimes in life, we're too embarrassed to admit our shortcomings and our faults, our hangups. Right. Because we all have, you know, shortcomings and faults. I mean, there's nobody's immune to it. No one's perfect. Right. <laughs> And I really yeah, salute you true. for, you know, for sharing your message there and being open and honest. Like I say, it takes a lot of courage and I, I admire that and I respect that. And Rich, um, how, what's your website and how can people get in touch with you and say, Hey, I think I can talk to this guy here because at least I know he's honest and he'll help me. Yeah, exactly. Well, and that's exactly what I try to do. My website is www.hirecallingconsultingllc.com. I know it's a, a long one, but uh, HireCallingConsultingLLC.com. And uh, if they go on there, they can go to my Connect uh, link and send a message to me. And for those that do, I want to be able to give them a, uh, a graphic that I've created for a life story timeline to help them see where those moments are in their life that could impact themselves and other people. Sure, because we all need a, you know, kind of like a daily journal to keep, uh, you know, to keep focused on. That's kind of right. like Tamara Hunter. She's a cancer survivor, and she created uh, one of our executive training directors that I mentioned earlier, ladies and gentlemen. Um, Tamara, her goal was she didn't want anyone to go through cancer alone because she had a chemo buddy, and she prepared this journal, and it's there to help you through the good times, the bad times, and all that. Keep you, you know, going down the pathway of living. Because life is all about enjoying your life and living. That's the bottom line. But I want to thank you again for being with us, Rich. And I've got to bring Javier on the stage here and not take up too much time. But listen, thank you again. Appreciate your message. And thanks on behalf of all the people here at, for having us, being with us today on Messages of Inspiration, Hope, and Support. We really appreciate your message and appreciate you serving America in the Air Force. And uh, if you're like me, like I tell people, I've got an official government document document that says I'm officially retarded. <laughs> <laughs> that, that blue card says it all. <laughs> you bet, brother. Hey, thank you much. We'll see you a little later. Indeed. God bless. And you bet. Thank you, sir. And at this time, let me uh, cut off the video and mute the mic here. And let me, uh, Javier, let me invite you to the show. Did you get your, there you are. How you doing, Javier? Doing great. Thank you. How you doing this morning? Doing good. So glad that you're with us. You're joining us from where? Is that Arizona? Yes, Phoenix, Arizona. Phoenix. Okay. We go out to Phoenix quite often. It's a wonderful town and we've got some great friends out there. And you're going to be talking to us about the importance of having a purpose. And you might be sharing a couple of other things with us. So let me do a couple of things here. Let me uh, change the view here to a speaker view. And let me give you the spotlight here. There we go. And Javier, let me cut off my video, mute my mic, because the stage is yours. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, good morning, everybody. Good afternoon, wherever it is you may be. Thank you for this opportunity to be here with you. Um, 
the the topic that I'm talking on this morning is has to do with uh, having a purpose, creating a purpose in an area of your life that is important to us. I know most of us, you know, 95% of us, it's a really high percentage of, do not really have a purpose, know what it is our purpose, our life goals are. And, um, you know, I want to kind of break it down a little bit because creating a life purpose actually takes something. It takes an, an intention. Usually, you know, we don't give thought to that. Like, what are we deserving of? What difference can we make in the world and in our life? And it can be kind of complicated. Everybody knows they would like to have a purpose. They believe that they have a purpose. They're just not sure what that is. And, you know, I kind of break it down, you know, with some of my clients I work with first, uh, if they, you know, to work on a life purpose takes some time. So I pick an area in their life, you know, so there's an area of their life, whether it be their employment, their career, a relationship, travel, something that it is that they want to do that's a little bit easier to focus on and to attain until you can develop a strategy on how to really create a purpose. And then there's even a purpose in the smaller areas and in an attention, in a, an interview, in a, a conversation. So I'll hit a little bit of, on each of those. But what I would like to share with you is, you know, I'm an ent entrepreneur. I've been, uh, you know, self-employed and worked for myself for 20 plus years now. I was started off as a, in, as a contractor, a, a, a laborer, and then I got in as a general contractor. And then now I'm pursuing my, my life dream, which is which was my purpose, I mean, my purpose, but I wasn't really clear about it, to really make a difference for others and in their health and their mental health and reaching their goals. It was something that I did, but I, I ran up a lot uh, against, uh, you know, making a difference and contributing my, my fears. There was everything that was in the way, you know, I was, uh, as a public speaker now, that was one of my biggest fears. In high school, if I had to give a presentation or speak, I would be sure that I was sick on that day. I wouldn't show up. It, it just terrified me. And one of the things that it is that I want to point out, a lot of times when we're creating our purpose, we believe we have to have all the reasons and the evidence to show that we can fulfill on that. And if they, they don't present themselves and towards us fulfilling on what we may inspire to, we cancel that out. You know, and, and that's something that I really work with a lot of people. You don't have to know how it is that's going to happen. You just have to begin to ponder on and imagine for yourself, what is that that you would really like for yourself? What is, what could happen at, as an end goal? Because what happens when we think of a possibility or a purpose or something that we would like to have in our life, you know, we, we cancel it out with all the obstacles, the reasons, the excuses, the justification for why it is that it can't happen. And, and I'll get a little bit more into that. But for, for example, I had a purpose when I was first starting out, when I was an employee working for somebody else, and it was to be self-employed. I wanted to be self-employed. I wanted to, I would always tell myself, if I could only, you know, work for myself and if I could make enough money to, to pay my bills, to get by where I didn't have to go in to work for anybody else, I would be happy. That would be great. And what I realized, and, and it came to be after a while, I was actually doing that. But for two years, I was doing just what my intention and my purpose was to just make enough money to get by, to not have to go work for anybody else. And, and I, so it wasn't expanded. It was, I was doing just that. So a lot of times we have these intentions and these purpose to survive. And we will do that because as, as um, creatures of nature, we are survivalists. We will survive. We will do enough to get by. You know, we worry about and we put a lot of intention on, you know, the things and how can how it's not going to happen. And we let our worries consume us, but we will survive. We always get through. And, you know, most of the things that we worry about never come to be. 90% of them of the things that we worry about don't happen. But so I want to, to kind of speak and I want you to look for yourself. You know, what are some of the purposes or the intentions that you would have? Because as you get clear on your purpose, your definite chief aim, and you make it more specific, it's more, it's easy, easier attainable, okay? And what I mean by that is a lot of times when, when I sit with some of my clients and I look at what is it that they're committed to, what they fill me with is everything that's not working, why it can't work, and all of the excuses, the justifications for why it's not happening. I'm committed to it, but, and what, def, what follows directly after that is everything and every reason for why it is that can't happen. 
So it really, and then another thing that will come up too is um, they'll say, well, I want to be happy. I want to be financially free. I want to be successful. And it, that's kind of, that's more conceptual, you know, so conceptual isn't sp specific. So a lot of the time is what we speak is conceptually, you know, I just want to be happy. I want to be free. I want to enjoy my life. I want to be at peace. And that is good in itself. That's the end result with, with what it is that your purpose would be or your intention on what it is that you would want to feel is it would give you happiness. It would give you peace. So you have to begin to really look for yourself. What is that that would give you like, so say if someone was talking about money, I want to be financially free. I just, that I would be happy. Well, financially free, what, what are some of the things that you would be doing in your life that money, the finances would give you the freedom to do that would make you happy? And, and it's, un, it's, un, it's unbelievable how their intention is not there. That's what, you know, you hear the cart before the horse. They want this, but, you know, that's, they kind of got it backwards. So, if for, so, so for example, um, I'm also an Ironman triathlete, okay? And um, at an older age, I had a, uh, my wife at the time got pregnant with my little boy, and, and I'm here going to be a, an older father. And um, this was my third Ironman. And I was thinking, wait, my, my purpose for this Ironman and to compete this, this, this last time that I had was to really be a healthy father, vibrant, so that I can be there for my little boy who's five, year old, five years old now. And it was before he was going to be a one. My intention is that I would be in my best shape ever so that when he came about, I could play with him. I could participate with him in, in, in the park, on the basketball court. We can do things. I didn't want to be like how I seen even people who were half my age were sending their boy out to play and not able to throw him up in the air and participate, play with him on the beach. So my purpose was specific. It was to be that father to engage in, in activities with my boy. So as I was training, and, and for those of you who don't know what an Ironman triathlete is, it's, it's a two and a half mile swim, 112 mile bike ride, followed up with a marathon, right? So I knew if I were to, to beat my first Ironman time that I would actually be in my best shape ever. So I had an intention and I had a purpose and my purpose, which drove me, it was inspiring, okay? Because usually a purpose isn't something you want to create that's a fear in order to, if I don't do this, I'm going to sink, I'm going to lose my business. My purpose was something that inspired me. It was to be healthy and strong and to be there for my son. So as, a, as a, an Ironman, if you never competed in one before, it's a year-long training. For me, because I had competed and I stayed active, it was more like an eight-month training. And uh, I even had some buddies of mine who were concerned that I didn't start enough. But that what made all the difference is I, I did start in time, and I knew I did because I had a purpose. There was a purpose driven behind it versus when I at first did it, it was more ego-driven, just so that I can say that I did it. And the difference that it made by having a purpose in this area of my life was that as I was training, as I was struggling, and I would get in a 100-mile ride, and I would add another five miles to it, I was present to my purpose, my intention for why it is that I was taking this on. And, and my, it made the experience of training and, and competing and participating that much more enjoyable because I would think of my little boy. And um, after that was all said and done, Actually, whenever I did complete my, my third Ironman for the, with, with a purpose, I actually competed and completed it two and a half hours faster than my first Ironman 10 years prior. So the point is that I'm wanting to make there is when you have a purpose and you have an intention of what it is, the outcome of what it is that you want to have in your life, it facilitates it. It gives you reason when you're struggling with what it is that you're struggling with in your life that you fulfill it on it with a greater outcome. So, you know, I really, I, I, I struggle. People got to get, and what I want you to get here today is it's, it's so important to have a, a purpose, an intention in your, your life's goal, your, an area of your life, whether it's a relationship or even uh, in an instance, say if it's a, a job interview, 
to have a purpose. What is my intention? To really get grounded in what that is, because without that, what we are, and most of us are doing today, is we're just going through and we're surviving. We're getting through another day. Thank God for Friday. You know, we just want to get by, you know, making the, the, the buck, you know, all these phrases and these sayings that we say that actually get us through, but there's no purpose, there's no intention. And there's a good chance that, you know, I mean, I know the people who are listening to us today are about self-development. They're, they're really looking, they, they listen to inspirational videos, but most of us do not. And it's a 95%. If you ask people today, what is it that they were doing? If they were living their purpose, if they had passion in their life, 95% of us don't. And, and why I say what it is that's missing is they haven't created a purpose, a chief aim in an area of their life that really matters to them. So it's very critical that you stop and you look like, what would be my intention that would be here? And try to, don't put your intention on what you're trying to fix. Like, what would be the greatest outcome in any area of your life? You know, I do a lot of relationship coaching. It was not what I got into to the coaching, but most of my referrals are referred to me for relationship coaching. And, you know, it's, it's all about relationship. It's all about relationship. The relationship with the banker, your significant other. But the, the most important relationship that there is, is the one that we have with ourselves. What are the conversations that we are having with ourselves about ourselves? And when we have our intention, like a lot of times, if you don't have a purpose or a goal in your life that you're committed to, by default, what it is that we're dealing with is everything that it is that's not working. What's wrong? What could have been better? What should have happened? So we are never in the present. We are always either in the past or worried about a future that may not happen or that could happen that we're worried about. So when you create a purpose and an intention in your life, in any area, any area of your life, it sets the tone for who you are being in the present, which gives and attracts things and opportunities and resources to you that would fulfill on that. Because how would you know what to look for if you weren't clear on what it is that you were committed to? And when you do have this purpose, whether it's in your relationship, which I'll talk to you about in a moment, um, is now you always have an intention. And people, if you share your, your, your purpose or what it is, your goals, what it is that you're committed to, as you're sharing that with people who would support that, you would be amazed by the resources that will show up. And this is all the result of having an, a, pur a purpose and having an intention. Okay, some of the things whenever I, I coach with couples and, and, and they come together me, with me is what I tell them, you know, what are your intentions? You know, you got to be real with yourself and what is your purpose? Because I start off very quickly, I say, do, do you want it to work? Because in some cases, one of the individuals, their purpose would be not to, they're not committed to the relationship, but nobody wants to be at the fault or responsible for a relationship not working. OK, so even if it weren't going to work or this person moved on, how about having a purpose that you and your spouse are happy in that your children experience the love that you both have for one another, whether you're able to work it together and come together or, or not. OK, because you could always have that intention and that um, purpose that you you handle your your differences and the things that you had struggled with and you still honor one another. But you got to get something that's holding an intention, that's having a purpose that your children experience the love that you have for one another. It may not be a, a romantic type of love, but a love such that your children can see and experience what you have. I, I was once told by a very wise woman, the greatest, the greatest gift you can give your child is that they experience the love that the mother has for the father or vice versa. And I know there are situations where that can be abusive relationships, substance abuse, where you need to remove them from that. But even if you remove yourself from that situation, you can, you can still have the intention and the expression of love for that person. So having a pur purpose is very critical in any area of your life. And, um, you know, so you just want to begin to engage because nobody's going to know what it is your purpose is, what it is that you would desire and are what you would like for yourself. As I coach with people in my life, um, what it is that I see, I, I missed that last note, so I don't know if anybody was um, saying something to me. 
But anyway, what you see is most people, the, their, their purpose are something of passion that they would really like for themselves in their life. They've never shared it with anybody. They don't see it as possible. They don't see how it is that they can have that happen. Okay. But this is something that's so critical. And I want you all to get out there. You don't have to know how it's going to happen. And that's what keeps us a lot of us from having and imagining what it would be like to fulfill on that purpose, that desire, that goal, that dream, okay? Whenever it is that, like for instance, in a relationship, women, they, they come to me, or even guys, they tell me that they just want to be happy. They want uh, somebody who's, a, who's um, a provider and can support them in their relationship. And I tell them they have to be very careful because people say, well, I want someone who's kind to me, who doesn't abuse me, who who provides for me, okay? So that's their intention, that's their goal, and that's their purpose. Well, they've been married for, you know, 10 years, they're not happy, they, they don't go dancing, they don't travel, they don't try no food, but hey, their, their spouse, they provide for him, for them, they come home, they eat dinner, they're kind to them, and there's no excitement, there's no, nothing lively in their, in their relationship. So they got what it is that they wanted, that they were asking for, but it was specific. So it's very critical that you expand and add everything that it is that you would want for yourself in your relationship with nothing left out. And, and how that happens if you bring someone else into your relationship, and he may not be this type of person that likes to travel or likes to dance, but really cares for you and you're expressing it and you're saying what it is that you're committed to. He may be on the side going out taking dance lessons and he will live into what it is that you believe and what it is that you're committed to for yourself so that he can share that life and be your partner. So that's why it is that it's so important that when you create your purpose, that you're specific, you're, you're, you don't talk in conceptuality like peace, love, happiness, and you get really clear on what that is that you want for yourself. I'm going to wrap that up here um, just to give you a sense of what it is that I do. And, um, you know, how it is that I can support you? I'm a health and lifestyle coach. I, I do cardiovascular screening. So even when people come to me with um, life-threatening um, disabilities and illnesses, they have to have a purpose for why it is they want to improve their life and get better. So that's it. And thank you all so very much for your time and your attention. Peace and love to you. Wow. Thank you very much, Javier. That was a very powerful message that you shared with everyone. And I mean, I understand the discipline. Now, I've never participated in the Iron Man contest, but I understand the mental discipline that it takes. I respect that because uh, yeah, but many times I bet you felt like I felt like quitting, right? Oh, yeah. It, it was really hard. Two times prior to that, it was, I, I did feel like quitting. Now, you, you look yeah. for a reason that would take you out, but when you have a purpose, you're, you're driven, you know, and it was a whole mm -hmm. different experience. Yeah, and I really like the way you brought out the point that, uh, about how we get caught up in our minds and we live in fear, and the fear can only relate to the past, and we're trying to project that into the future, and that just really destroys all of our, our focus and everything because we're yeah. so caught up in the process of living rather than the content of living. And that's what you were talking about there. I really appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And just on the topic, what we were talking about in your, your guest before is, you know, the thing about it is we have our own fears and everything that's going on. We want to be careful that we don't take on our, receive or adapt any other other people's fears because we take on what it is that they're concerned about and we make them our own and we got to be really careful to to use our own critical thinking and our thoughts and logic to what what makes sense what's attainable what's achievable and and use your own heart and your own judgment yeah you're exactly right because uh it's so easy for us to try to include everybody else into our own you know, fears and things of this nature. The same is true with anything, anything like feelings or uh, prejudices or hatreds or anything like that. Yeah. And uh, you're exactly right. And give people the opportunity to make their own decisions and respect their decisions mm -hmm. and agree to disagree. That's, that's a, that's a toughie too sometimes, isn't it? Yeah. It really is. But I really admire the work that you do and I don't believe you mentioned your website and your email address. Would you be kind enough to share that with us, sir? Okay. The best way to reach me right now is, is at Xavier Marine 
lifecoach at gmail.com. I offer a free consultation. So I'll spend an hour with somebody going over looking at an area of their life for, for no, no cost at all to just really look to see if we were even a fit or not. And then my website, which is work, being worked on right now by actually the person who recommended to you to me, um, it's a health style systems with an S at, okay, health style systems, H-A-E-L-T-H, S-T-Y-L-E, S-Y-S-T-E-M-S dot com. Good deal. Well, I'll tell you right now, and let me uh, cut Rich's uh, camera on and bring him back. I want to talk to all three of you just a moment, not, not talk with you, but to, you know, very, very much thank you all three for both of you being here with me and make up the three. <laughs> but uh, best of time here. Yes, hey, you, very you, much, sir. very much. And I really appreciate you guys being on the day and thank you so much for being a part of the messages of inspiration, hope and support. And please remember that you're going to be on speakerspathway.com website. Just go to messages of inspiration, hope and support. That's when we get the show done today. It won't be today. Don't get me wrong. It takes a few days because we've got a lot going on to be able to go in and, and, and actually uh, edit the video, the entire video that we're recording right now, take me out of the picture and do the individual presentation as I showed earlier. And for those of you that may have missed it, let me just very quickly share my screen and show you what I'm talking about here. When you go to speakerspathway.com, uh, let's see, I already got down there. Speakerspathway.com, if you scroll down and you just see the inspiration, messages of inspiration, hope, and support, scroll on down and see, see more. This is where we have the each individual speaker, their presentation. And if you click on, like, let's just click on Barry here since he's convenient. Each individual speaker will have their individual presentation there. Mm. And is there, this is there is some, a link to that that we could copy and paste on some of our? Yeah, you see it up here. It says speakerspathway.com and his yeah. name. Mm -hmm. It'll be there, but wait till we get it posted there. Oh, okay. Because one of the things that we do here, and this is a nicety to know the way we operate, we're all about paying it forward. Mm -hmm. You guys came on and you volunteered your time, your information, all that, and we paid for everything, you know, because it costs a little bit of money to do all this, but we are paying it forward, and then this, this way here, we've richly blessed you, we've blessed ourselves, and most importantly, we've blessed a lot of other people out there who are struggling, especially during this time, and even though we may be under house arrest, too many people, unfortunately, they put themselves in solitary confinement, and that really does um, hurt a lot of people because I tell people, hey, you know, just do Zoom calls with your family or you know, use some other type of media to get out there. And, you know, you get online there with the family, play trivia or play some game or make sure you have eat, everyone has a dish. And what are you eating? Why is this one I'm eating? You know, and, and just have a, a fun time together because it's important for us to stay in touch with not only our family, but also our friends, because our job on, on planet Earth is to help other people in their hour of need. And that's why you, each one of your messages that you gave today is very, very timely, very, very important. And on behalf of Speakers Pathway Coalition at speakerspathway.com, I'm Jim Grant. And Don McGrath, the co-founder and all the executive training directors, want to personally thank you. But before we go, Rich, I'll start with you first. Do you have any closing thoughts you'd like to say to the audience today? Yeah, sure. Um, really just, I would encourage people that no matter what point they're in in their life to take a look at themselves and see what they can do to, to make a change that would allow them to be the best person they can possibly be every single day and then take the steps to make that happen. And again, if somebody needs uh, assistance with that or if it's something that they need to dive a little deeper into, I'm always here to help them out. Uh, they can go to my website and or look me up on LinkedIn at uh, Rich Parsons and I can connect with them and help them out. But I just appreciate the opportunity and uh, wish blessings to everybody. Thank you, Rich. And Javier, my man, the Iron Man, you got some words of wisdom. Would you like to share something with the, with the audience as we get ready to close? Yes, I just 
want you all to just really know this and that, you know, we were, God gave us the greatest gift of all is to create, is as creators, to create and to use our own mind and our own thought. It's the only thing that we have complete control over, of what it is we choose to think, what it is we choose to create. And there's this very, it's a, a powerful distinction. You know, a lot of times we're looking and we want to change thing, things, change them from what's not working to making them better. But our focus is always on trying to change things and forget about what's not working. What I say, and it's, it's just like disappear those conversations of what hasn't worked and begin to put your attention and your mind on the things that you desire. And you will have the, what we have and what we're experiencing in our life is a direct result of what it is we give our time, our attention and our thought to. So I wanna just leave you with this, just be aware of what you give thought to on a daily basis, work it like a muscle, begin to condition yourself and eventually you'll be giving more thought to what it is that you desire versus what it is that's wrong in your life. And you'll be experiencing that as a result each and every day. Well, thank you, sir. It's, it's very important too to also remember, ladies and gentlemen, if you wake up in the morning, you got heart beating your veins and breath in your lungs, that's a good day. And uh, most importantly, love yourself because that way you can love others. Forgive yourself so you can also forgive others of their shortcomings too, because many times we want to mentally beat ourselves up for doing dumb things. I know I've, I've been guilty of that a lot in my life. But most importantly, focus on having a good day and giving thanks for everything in your life, for the many blessings of life, especially the things that money cannot buy. Think about that as we close. Thank you so much, Rich. Javier, give you a chance to wave goodbye to everyone. Thank you again, John. Yeah, thank you. You bet. Peace and love to you all. Take care. You bet. Take care. Have a wonderful day. Thank you guys for tuning in. We'll see you tomorrow. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.